Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Profitable Mindset Podcast with Charlotte Smith. Welcome to the Profitable Mindset, a show dedicated to teaching you the skills you need to build a profitable product-based business that makes you feel free and fully in control. Here's your host, Charlotte Smith. Hey there, I'm Charlotte Smith, and welcome to episode number two. I am so thrilled you're here. I'm going to continue the conversation explaining the 25 steps to start and set up your farm business. But first, how's your week going? Are you having a great spring? So spring on our farm is really busy. Part of that is because our grass grows like crazy right now, and it's really hard to keep up. We're moving animals all over the place. We're weed eating to keep it down and mowing and everything we can. And we're also in the midst of finalizing our poultry schedule for the summer. And as some of you may know, there are just so many moving parts there with the butcher and et cetera. (laughs) The other thing is I'm packing up because I'm headed to Pikeville, Kentucky this weekend, where I'll be teaching a full day marketing workshop for the Pikeville Farmers Market Vendors. And I love meeting you guys in person. I've spoken at 10 conferences so far this year, and I've gotten to meet so many of you in person. That is really why I do what I do, to hear your stories and to meet you and to just be around like-minded people. It is the best. Well, I'm from Oregon, so I'm really excited because I have some people that are going to drive me around some Kentucky farm country, and it looks really different from us. And I also, I was just doing a little research, I found out that Pike County, where I'm headed, is the home of the Hatfields and the McCoys. So I grew up hearing about that old legend, and I never really thought about it being a real place, but it really is, and I'm going to be there this weekend. All right, so now let's dive back into the 25 Steps. These are for you no matter where you are in your farm business. Of course, if you're just starting out, it's perfect for you. But if you've been in business for a while, you will still want to review these steps. So chances are there are some places where you'll need to fill in the gaps. Like I've said before, it took me years to figure out all these 25 steps, But you will have a head start if you're just starting out because you'll be able to get these done within the next few months or for sure by the first year. And again, it's just going to help you get profitable and sustainable so much faster. Today, I'm diving into steps five through 11, and these are all around the business side of things. I'll link to the full list in the show notes too. But you can download it anytime you want and follow along. It's at 3calmarketing.com forward slash 25 steps. And again, this is the list that I wish someone had given to me when I started my farm 10 years ago. It would have just taken away so many headaches and we would have made more money sooner and lost less money. (laughs) All right, so let's dive in. Step number five, meet with an accountant. This is really, really important. I want you to have an initial consultation so that, especially if you're brand new, you know how to get set up with your record keeping for the first year. I talk to a lot of farmers who are trying to do their taxes themselves, and it can be a real challenge. There are the tax laws change every year. So, my accountant just shared with me that every October or so, he gets a list of all the tax law changes, and he has to download them into his software so that uh, he prepares our taxes properly. Now, I never would have known this, and there's no way I could know all the keep up with all the different changes and the laws and the tax codes. I rely on him to do that. He has saved us way more money over the years than we've ever spent with him. As a matter of fact, we had some friends over for dinner a couple weeks ago. And someone said that their accountant was charging them a lot of money, so they thought. And in my head, I was thinking, you know, my accountant is worth his weight in gold. And any money I pay him is money so well spent. He has kept us 
on track. He's helped us become profitable. He's saved us so much money. I just, I, this is such an important step. So even if you were trained in accounting, maybe in college, once you've started your farm, you're really wanting to make sure that you keep everything on track and accountant will help you do that. It's also really good to find one who's had farming, well, he's had experience doing taxes for farmers or ranchers. And you can just ask around to some of your farming and ranching friends and get some recommendations, but they should be able to meet with you for free for the first session, I would think, just to make sure it's someone that you think you can work with and that you feel like you could have a relationship with. I uh, also love that our accountant is just 30 minutes away so that I can meet with him in person. My husband and I will go in there a couple times a year with our paperwork, and he'll help give us advice. I just love being able to do that in person. So it was important to me to find someone close. And then once you meet with your accountant, which is step five, you can ask them about the next few steps I'm going to go over. So step six is you'll want to get an employee identification number, and you can do this online. It's free, but just make sure you register with the .gov site, and this is linked up in the 25 steps too, okay? So it's irs.gov, search for employee identification number, and grab that. And then step seven is to register your business name, and you need to do this step before you open your bank account, because it's a requirement of having a business account. So that's why, you know, most of these steps are in a logical order. Now, to register your business name, it varies from state to state. In Oregon, it's with the Secretary of State. So check with your state business offices regarding those registration requirements for you. All right? But just start with that. Google, you know, register your business name in your state the information will come up. It's very quick. Uh, I did it online and I went in the next day to the bank and they saw my business name on the Secretary of State Registry. So you don't have to wait. You're not going to get anything in the mail. It just is all online. And then moving on to step number eight, this is what you'll want to ask your accountant about. And that is to understand your options when it comes to business entities. Each state has their own rules on business entities, so ask a professional. Don't just assume you're going to be a sole proprietorship or an LLC. My farm was set up in an LLC. I have several farm friends who are C-Corp or S-Corp. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an accountant. I'm a farmer, so I can't tell you what to do. But ask the advice of your accountant. They will know what you should do. And then re- do a little research on those options too so you have you feel educated and you feel like you're getting good advice too. All right, moving on. Step number nine, open separate business bank accounts. I have a friend who is an attorney for farmers, and she said the most common mistake almost every farmer she works with does is they commingle their personal and their business money. They either run everything out of their personal checking accounts or they're constantly paying for business things out of their personal account and personal things out of their business account. This The IRS does not like this. You need to have separate business bank accounts. So that's why, you know, register your business name and get into the bank and open those separate bank accounts. Now, if you've been running them out of one one account so far up until now, that's fine. Get in your bank today and, and get those business accounts set up and get those separated. Typically, you'll just start with a checking and a savings account. These should be uh, free of any fees. You should not have to pay fees. So my bank, you, you know, check with your bank. I go to Wells Fargo. And the account I have, I have a couple different accounts. One of them has a $500 minimum requirement for no fees. And another one means that I just have to have monthly transfers to a savings account to avoid the fees. So they will probably have some requirements for you to avoid the fees, but just do that. They're so worth it. If for some reason your bank will not offer you an account without fees, I'd I'd find a new bank or another bank for your business 
accounts because you should be able to find accounts with no fees. And again, check with an attorney or your accountant to, to make sure and finalize this. But again, the most important thing is do not commingle your business and your personal funds. This raises all sorts of red flags with the IRS. <laughs> all right. So that brings us to step number 10, which is to set up a payment processing system. Now, there are so many options out there. We use squareup.com in our farm store. It is easy to have. We have it on our phones and our iPads. So whether we are off-site doing deliveries or we're at a drop site or we're in a market setting or we're in our farm store, any one of us can pull up the iPad or pull up the app on our phone and run a charge. So we've used other POS systems with a point of sale, and we really like squareup.com. Credit card fees and processing fees are the cost of doing business today. I was just doing a website review for one of our clients, our farm marketing students. And on her website, it said to order your beef, send a check to this address. And most people, probably 99% of people reading that will click away until they find a website where they can just click and place their order. It is really going to stop you up if you choose not to use credit cards today. If you want people to pay with cash or check, you are missing out on a lot of sales. So the 3% fee that on average PayPal or Square credit card companies charge you is nothing compared to the extra sales you get by starting to use that. So using deciding to have take credit cards will attract more customers. And also the current customers you have will spend more money. I can't tell you how many times I had people walk in my farm store, grab some items and put them on the counter to check out. And they pull, they're looking for their checkbook and they say, you don't take cards, do you? And as soon as I say, oh yeah, sure we do. We take all cards. They go back and they get five or 10 more items and they spend 150 more dollars. Sometimes they'll say, okay, I'll order a quarter beef and they charge their card for $700 for that. Or, you know, so it's not just hundreds, it's thousands more dollars they spend when they realize we take cards. So paying, I am happy to pay that 3% on an extra thousand dollars a customer might spend because I would not have made that sale otherwise. So I just want you to uh, have that mindset shift as part of why this uh, podcast is called The Profitable Mindset, because it's not just about the how-to of running your farm. It's about how you think about it. And having a mindset that credit cards and using payment processing systems is the cost of doing business today will really open up your your sales, they will shoot through the roof. I think when we first started taking credit cards, which was about two years into our business, our sales doubled almost immediately. And that to me was worth, uh, 3% was a small fee to pay for that. All right. So research squareup.com, paypal.com, maybe your website has an e-commerce system already. Uh, there's Shopify. There's so many out there, but just plan on doing that. Don't make people look for cash in their purse or try. I've had people offer to drive home and get their checkbook. You know, Don't make them do that today. All right. And then lastly, the last step we're going to go over today, step 11, is to find an insurance agent you trust. This is going to be another potentially fairly large expense you have. So you want to make sure it's someone you trust. I have a lot of farmers that I work with that have been both underinsured and overinsured over the years. So you want to make sure that you have someone you trust, you know they're giving you good information, and more importantly, you are meeting with them to update your insurance needs every couple years. Things on our farms change so often that you, if you first got your insurance policy five or 10 years ago and you have not revisited it, you need to do that. 
I've had a lot of farmers, I, I hear the horror stories of a building burning down and they were underinsured so they cannot rebuild the barn or they lost all their hay and they were underinsured. So, you know, they're out the thousands and thousands of dollars of the hay that got burnt up in that barn too. So make sure you're covered. Now, I will share a little bit with you about the insurance that I have. I'm not telling you that you need this, but it just might, I I just want to give you kind of an idea of what works for me. Also, everybody has kind of a different comfort level of (laughs) risk with insurance. Some people like, I, I think I tend to be one of those people who likes to have more coverage. And then there are other people who are okay with less coverage. Let me give you the, this example of what I do. So we have our general farm liability policy, which all of you probably have through your homeowner's insurance. And that protects people coming onto the farm, but it's not a product liability. So it doesn't cover any of your meat or eggs or milk or anything like that. So that's what we have. Basic needed that at first. Then the next thing I added was raw milk liability insurance. And I could tell you that is very, very, very hard to find. I'm grandfathered in because I got it so long ago, but I know people across America are having a really hard time finding product liability insurance for raw milk. So I don't know how to help you right now. And I have not met anyone who has any answers to that. So that's unfortunate, but that's where we are. I also have liability insurance that covers our meat and egg sales too. So it covers its product liability insurance for that. Now, the other thing is I started teaching classes in our home, uh, nutrition classes and cheese classes. And we had people coming in our house every month for a Saturday class. And I got a home business liability policy And I never had to use it, but it gave me peace of mind knowing that people, you know, if I have 15 people in my house doing a hands-on class, working with burners and and pots and, and pans and things, that I liked having that extra assurance that they would be okay. And then the other thing we have is we have a farm camp in the summer. We have kids from 6 to 12, and then we do a teenage camp. And those kids are riding horses, and they jump in a stock tank, and they use hammers to build things. And so I got I got a policy that covers just the weeks that the kids were here. It was $350 or so, and I felt so secure being able to tell the parents that we had coverage for that. So again, that was me feeling like I needed that peace of mind. And once again, I never had to tap into that insurance. Thank goodness. But $325 to be certain that I was covered in case of accident with any one of those kids was amazing. I'm really happy that that we do that and found that. And then the final kind of insurance we get that I highly recommend is a one-day rider on our homeowner's insurance when we have events, especially if we're serving alcohol. So if we have a farm dinner where we're having, we live in wine country. So it's just very normal that local wines would be served with any event we have. And so if we have a farm dinner, I would just do a one day rider. I can't give you a price on that. It seems like it was a couple hundred bucks, but again, the peace of mind knowing that we're covered if something should happen was priceless for me. So you could do this like if you're having a wedding, one of your kids is getting wet married in your yard and you're having alcohol at that event, a one-day rider is perfect for that too. So those are the types of insurance I have and there may be others that you need. But I think one of the most important things is to make sure that you are not underinsured. And that happens for me by getting in, together in person with my insurance agent here on the farm every two years. And we go over everything because like I said, our farms change, they grow, they evolve. We build new buildings and we forget to get them insured. We put hay in different places and we need to make sure that's covered. So go over all that. And again, probably the best way to find an agent you trust is to ask around in your community, ask other farmers near you, you know, definitely you want an insurance agent who understands what you're doing. So ask around and then meet with them. 
you want someone that you like. You know, I'm huge. I teach relationship marketing, right? So I'm all about the relationship. So it's got to be someone that you feel comfortable talking with. You can call them up and ask them questions and that they will have your best interest (laughs) in, in their minds when they work with you. Okay, so that's it on steps five through 11 of the 25 steps to start and set up your farm business. You guys have so many action steps this time. And again, you can download the whole list at 3cowmarketing.com forward slash 25 steps. So you can make sure you're getting everything covered. And in the next three weeks, I'm going to wrap up all of the rest of the steps and, and give you these more thorough explanations than you get just on the checklist. Okay, so that wraps up episode number two. And because my podcast is new, I'm asking all of you to write a review on iTunes for me. It is so crucial in those first few weeks. It really helps with getting my podcast out there. So if you do write a review, you'll be entered in a weekly raffle for a free consultation, reviewing either your website or your social media accounts, where I'll give you feedback on things you can improve upon to increase sales and followers. If you want to enter that raffle and leave me a review, please, 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 Just go to 3cowmarketing.com forward slash iTunes, and that page will take you through the whole process of leaving a review on iTunes, which is easy, but there are a couple of steps. Then it's just going to ask you for a little bit of information so we can identify which review you wrote. Then you'll be entered into the weekly raffle, and I'll email you. You'll have that chance to work with me for free, and I can tell you there's nothing more fun than that. All right, I will see you in the next episode of Your Profitable Mindset. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. For more great resources, check out theprofitablemindset.com. See you next time.